All right, so this is going to be a video where I talk about the book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, it's a good book. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, there's a ton of things in there that are very much like, this is how you help people, this is how you can win friends and have people follow you rather than you follow them. And there are really three things that I want to talk about. The first one is when you disagree with somebody and you want to correct their behavior, you need to compliment them first and say, this, like, you're doing really good in this area, but we need you to do a little bit better over here and then compliment them again. The second thing is if someone tells you that you did something wrong, don't immediately all of a sudden get really defensive. Um, and a really good way to, to establish like credibility with that is to say, okay, I'm sorry I messed up. Show me where I messed up so I can fix it. You know, go into it with that kind of an attitude instead of like, well, I'm right, you're wrong. Because that doesn't work and people don't like dealing with people who are that way. And the final thing is, um, if you want to change someone's opinion on something or change their mind about how they do something, the best way to do that is to allow them come to, to come to that conclusion themselves. So the first one, the example of if you disagree with someone or if someone needs correction, that you compliment them, offer the critique, and then compliment again, actually happened to me recently this week. I was edit I edited a video for my internship and this video is actually going on to their um, online course that they built out, a video course that people are going to buy and subscribe to. And, and my boss call, or texted me and said, hey, I want to talk to you today. Do you have time? And my response was, yeah, I've, you know, I've got time. And it actually worked out really well. I was driving somewhere for my other job. I was driving down south, and so I was just in, the, in a truck driving, not doing anything, so it worked out perfect for her to call me and, and talk to me. And she started it with, you're doing really good. We really, really appreciate all the work you've done, and we hope that you will be able to continue doing the work for us because we really appreciate it and we really need it. And she even pointed out some things that I've taught her as far as video goes, like audio is really important. Um, I'm trying to think what else. But just she pointed out good things, things I was doing really well. And then she said, okay, I want to take off the hat of the, the neighborhood friend, that, like the friend, that's how we got in contact with each other, and go more into your uh, boss. And I, I was like, You're, you are my boss, so please do go ahead and, and, and be open with me. Tell me what I need to do to fix or get better at what I'm doing. And she pointed out that, so we had a two camera set up when we did it and I was cutting to the second camera too frequently. It, it was very distracting. Uh, she also pointed out that I wasn't giving the audience time to breathe in the videos and in, in, in these content pieces that they'd made. I was just, as soon as she got done talking about one point, boom, onto the next one. There was no time to breathe. And she told me the story about, she went to a concert with her husband <clears throat> And it was a very well-known uh, orchestra uh, conductor. And he got up and he said, I want you, after each piece, to just sit. Sit in silence. Let it marinate in you a little bit. Don't clap until I turn around. And she, she said that it was the best musical experience they've ever had. Super touching. Like it was touching. Uh, very emotional. And she wants that, she wanted that in her content and she told me this. So now the next video I did in the series, I made sure to give little breaks in between each little piece. That way the audience can either pause the video or sit and go, oh, okay, yeah, that was really good. And, and that was just, and then she also came back and said, I, I, I want you to learn from this experience. I don't want you just to do it to check off the box, but also you are doing just such a good job. I've learned so much from you um, as far as video goes. And in fact, when I started at this internship, they were using their iPhone to record and now they're actually using camcorders, which is great. So much easier to work with for me 
on my end, I don't have to run it through a secondary program to transfer it from the, the Apple codec into a codec that I can work with on Windows. So just little things like that, like be gentle when you're critiquing someone. Don't just come in guns blazing because that's a great way to push people away, not to bring people into how you want them to be or what you want them to think. All right. The second thing is when you are being critiqued, don't get defensive. It, that's really hard. I know I struggle with it. It's this, my boss, going back to that last story I just told, if she had said, if she had not necessarily worn uh, kid gloves with me, if she had just said, fix this, this, I would have been like, well, um, excuse you, you know, like, cause, cause that would feel like she doesn't appreciate what I've been doing, but she appreciates what I've been doing and everything. So it worked out really well, but let's say for the sake of example that she didn't do that with me. And so I, I either could get very defensive and go, well, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just a photographer. You don't know anything about video. Or I can go this route and be, okay, I can see where you're coming from. Let me, let me ask you questions. Let me clarify why you are feeling this way. And, and I, we actually did do that um, a couple points where she would say something. And I would just say, okay, I want to make sure I'm hearing you. And I'm understanding what you're saying. So, and, and she did clear things up. Like with the, the two cameras thing, she was talking about how I cut mid-sentence or mid-word or whatever. It just was really jarring. And I said, okay, so you want me to use the second camera sparingly? And she said, no, I don't want it used sparingly. I want it used at like the end of a thought. Then you can transition to that one. Or at the beginning of a thought, transition to it. Just to give to give it more emphasis. And I really like that I can ask her questions and essentially just get the clarification of, oh, this is what you meant by this. Okay, I understand now, instead of trying to guess what's on her mind and why she's saying what she's saying. Um, the final point that I wanna talk about is when you have a disagreement with someone and you need them to think something else, it's better if you can allow them to have it be their idea. And an example for this is I was asked in an interview recently um, to if I was a marketing director and I was told that this product that they came out, this, this widget, they wanted to market it to every single person. How would I then explain to, to my boss that that's not going to work, that you need to have a niche you need to narrow your focus first and then once that's established then you can go wider and i told what my response was is i would tell the the boss okay i don't think that's going to work and this is and and here's why if you ever have gone hunting and like duck hunting for example there is two methods of doing that there is the spray and pray method which is there's a flock of, of ducks. I'm just going to shoot into the flock and hope I hit one. Very rarely will you have success doing that. The second method is, okay, there's one right there. I'm going to get that one. You have a specific target in mind. You get it. You hit it. You take it down. Same kind of idea with marketing is, and, and content. You know, if, if it's a content company, they're like, oh, I just want people to watch my video. It's like, okay, well, let's find your specific audience. What do they look like? You know, are, um, what do they do? Are they a stay home mom? Are they a working professional? Are they someone who maybe struggles with depression? Are they someone who's lonely? Are they someone who has a lot of friends or who wants to do YouTube, who wants to make YouTube videos? Like you need to take all these into account when you try and create content because if you just start saying, oh, I want to do this, then you're, you will be doing it. You'll be making the content, but you won't be seeing the return on your investment. And that's something that I think a lot of people, I know I struggle with it when I make videos or whatever. It's very much just a, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. There's no, you know, thought process behind it, or this is my specific target right here. Um, it's very much just a spray and pray, you know, just to spray and pray. I'm just going to throw it out there and hope people watch it. But if you can narrow that focus and help a company narrow their focus into something more substantial of, 
oh, this is what my ideal target audience looks like. This is how they act. This is what they like. This is what they don't like. You will have more success that way. And, but what I would do in that situation of talking to my employer would just give them examples as to like, if we, if we target it this way, if we target it this group, this group is going to then go, okay, I need, like, I want to tell my friends about this thing. And then you start the ball rolling of getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger instead of just starting really big. Um, and I, I want to talk about one more thing. Uh, th this doesn't really come from the book. It's just from me and my personal experience. Dealing with people who can say I'm sorry is much better than dealing with those who can't. If you can practice those three things that we just talked about, and then throw that last one in there, uh, and you don't have to every five seconds, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But if you make a mistake, if you say you uh, break a bowl at your house, just say, I'm sorry, I broke that bowl. Just admit it, move on, it's simple. But if you can do those three things and then add that last one in there, um, I, I'm positive that you will be able to, you know, you'll, you'll have more friends. You'll feel more power of influence in your life rather than being influenced by others.